It is time for Political Breakfast. We are live today. I say good morning to Brian Robinson and Theron Johnson, our strategists. Glad to have both of you here this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Uh, Let's jump right in. Uh, We were chatting about this earlier in the week. Governor Kemp skipped the state GOP convention but has plans to attend the national convention this summer in Milwaukee. Uh, Some are saying it's signaling he does have an interest in running for president one day. I wanted to get both of your perspectives. Uh, Brian, you first. Theron, you follow. Well, you know, Governor Kemp, let's not forget, is also the vice chairman of the Republican Governors Association. So this is going to be a chance for him to go out and talk to a a lot of folks who may be looking at running for governor in their states in uh, 2026. You know, because next year he's going to be the chairman of the Republican Governors Association. So he's going to have a national profile. He's got a national role to play. And he's going to be there networking, but also building his fundraising network. You know, he has been continuing to raise money and building up a political operation, even in his second term. That's not something that you normally see with a governor who doesn't have plans to run for another office at some point in the future. Political Breakfast listeners know I have long said I do not think that he would want to run for U.S. Senate here in 2026, even though many Republicans will beg him to the Republican National Senatorial Committee will certainly lobby him mercilessly to to run against Senator Ossoff. But I just don't see that as being appealing to him. And I do think he wants to keep his options open as far as running for president in 2028. You know, Lisa, I was um, really, really inclined to try to get into the governor's head and, and try to think about what he was planning to do. But one of the things that Governor Kemp has done a good job of, and B. Rob and I have talked about this, is that he he will surprise us sometimes. Um, and, but also, I think that B. Rob is right. You don't raise this money. You don't continue to have a high profile with the Republican Governors Association if you're not planning to do something. But I think that the, really the premise of this sort of conversation is, you know, why is he going to the convention, right? And that's number one. And then the second question we've got to answer for our listeners is why do we think He is going to the convention where a lot of the folks that would be there are MAGA radical right supporters of Donald Trump. Now, we do give the governor a lot of credit. He has stood up to the former president. But by going to this convention, um, while he has said that he will support the Republican ticket, and I remind our listeners who are listening live, First Lady Marty Kemp is going to play a very, very important role of the governor's future because he is um, you know, shoulder to shoulder with her and everything. She's very integral uh, in their personal life, but also in his political uh, ambition. And she is someone who recently came out and said that she will not be voting for Donald Trump. She even said that she would write her husband in Governor Kemp as the nominee, um, the person she would vote for for president. But by going to this convention, Lisa, while I do give Governor Kemp credit for standing up to the former president when he wanted him to break the law by basically overturning democracy and not accept election results. But by going to this convention, he's going to have to answer some questions. You know, does he oppose climate change the way that President Trump does? And we've had an EV charging um, boom here in Georgia with the economy. Um, You know, does he um, back limits, um, you know, abortion limits, right? You know, we know that he's expanded gun rights here uh, in the state. And he's been very, very supportive of conservative picks of of the Trump administration. So while he has developed an independence from Trump, there are a lot of policies that they are directly aligned on. And if Trump loses, which I will believe, do believe that he will lose and and Mm -hmm. President Biden will be reelected. How does he deal with the MAGA right crowd after Mm -hmm. the convention and after the election? Well, you you both agree he's building up his political operation. But wouldn't a Senate run uh, be strategic for him, Brian? Well, one thing he's going to be looking at, and I don't think that, that the Senate run is off the table completely, but I do think that if President Trump wins in 2024, and right now, if, if the election were held this week, Trump would win. He's winning in all the swing states, oftentimes outside of the margin of error in the polling. Uh, it's going to be much harder to to win as a Republican in Georgia in 2026. Now, vice versa, if if President Biden is reelected, then it's going to be a great year probably for Republicans to run for statewide office. There's, there's always this backlash against the incumbent president. That's particularly true in the second term of a president. So if President Biden is in office, that Senate nomination is going to be worth a lot more 
than if President Trump is in the White House. So that's going to be something that he's looking at. But is it is it strategically helpful? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's already got a national profile and a brand, which very few governors have. And you go to the Senate, all of a sudden you got to have a voting record, which can be used against you. You have to go through the rigors of a, a campaign after they've been through some really, really tough ones. I think he'd like to go make some money for a couple of years mm. and then think about running for president in 2028. Mm. Darren, so a Senate run waste of his time, do you think? I just think that, you know, B-Rob hit on something that's very important. And, I, and I, I do believe that the presidential election outcome is going to play heavily in his decision. Um, what, you know, what does it look like politically in Georgia? I believe President Biden will be reelected. Now, whether or not President Biden wins Georgia um, when we won it before, um, then that's that's got to be a, a smart calculation. But, you know, let, let me just for, first and foremost say that if the governor decided to run for U.S. Senate, I mean, he will be running against a very well-financed, well-respected senior U.S. senator from Georgia, and that's John Ossoff. Lisa, we wake up to this morning with news that this senator is showing leadership. He's the, one of the first, I think, of only recent Democrats to visit the border, right, to talk about this border crisis that mm -hmm. we have. And so to me, he's going to be very, very hard to beat. You're not going to be able to pin him as this sort of left-wing, liberal, progressive um, John Ossoff. I mean, this is a guy who's working across the aisle, who's working with Republicans to get things done for Georgia. Now, B-Rob mentioned something that's very interesting. Will he run for president? I think that that's a viable option after he goes and makes a little bit of money. And you know me, Lisa, I'm not against making the bag, right? Everybody <laughs> needs that opportunity to get some money. But I go back to the first lady. I think that she and the governor have got to figure out with the girls what type of lifestyle that they want to live post-political life. I mean, this is a governor who's been in office for a very long time. And Brian knows this. He was elected back in the early 2000s as a state senator uh, from, from Athens, Georgia. And so does he want to go and, and still do some good, but do it in the private sector? Uh, yes, would you he agree will. he's still enjoying <laughs> a honeymoon? Least, yes. Go governor Kemp is still on his honeymoon, isn't he, all these years later? Well, he's got oh, approval ratings up near 60%, and that is absolutely extraordinary in a state that uh, is not... 58% Republican, right? He, that means a lot of Democrats are approving of his record and his performance in office. And I would add that means there are a lot of minority voters who there are going to be up, up for grabs. That's right. I knew that was coming. Up for grabs. So he, couldn't, he couldn't wait to get that in. So let me say real quick, while I agree, the governor has not been a cheerleader, right? And let's not forget, Lisa, him and the former president are just not, you know, buddies, right? I mean, they, he, he went against them when he had an opportunity to go with Trump's selection for the U.S. Senate. He chose to go with Kelly Leffler over Doug Collins. So while I will say he's not a cheerleader, he is complicit. He is a part of this radical right movement. The Republican Party right now is Trump's party. I don't care what you say, how you try to spend it, whether he's on trial and we're still waiting for the jury to come back with their decision. This is still Trump's Republican Party. So how Governor Kemp breaks through that, not being a cheerleader, is going to be very, very um, interesting to see how it plays yeah. out. All eyes on Trump and all eyes on Governor Kemp as well. Thank you guys for waking up and joining me this morning. Uh, let's do it again next week. Thanks for being here. That was good. Thank you, Lisa. Amplifying Atlanta, this is WABE 90.1.